In today's video, I show you how I took these six photographs and then combined them to make this one. What is going on guys? Shooting Davis, so good to see your faces. Welcome back to the channel. Now, as you saw for the introduction, we're gonna be looking at some pretty cool hot rods and how I photograph them as well as editing them together. And if you're new here and you don't know what I'm about, I am at Shooting Dave, a photographer from London that now lives here in Los Angeles. And I make photo and video editing tutorials. So if that is something that is of interest to you, then please do consider subscribing. Okay, I wanna jump straight into this so there's no messing about. I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I shot each frame and then I'm gonna tell you the settings I use inside of Lightroom to edit it, and then bring them all into Photoshop and combine them that way. And then we'll finish it back off inside Lightroom. Sound good? Let's go. Okay, so I shot a number of frames for this, but I ended up using only six of them for it. So I'm gonna walk you through the settings for each one and also how I shot it. So first of all, we have the side light. Now this is the hero image. I typically start by lighting the side of the car or the largest portion of the car. As this is the front three quarter, the side of the car is the largest, therefore that's the one I start with lighting. So for this, it was ISO 100, 35 millimeter, F5.6 and a 10 second shutter. Now all of these shots will be at 10 seconds. I don't change the exposure time at all. I leave the camera settings exactly as they are. And what I do is I actually turn off my light as I move through the frame. So first of all, for this one, I actually started right up behind the car, behind the bench, and I held the light about shoulder height. And then I would then walk backwards in a diagonal line away from the car towards the camera. And this will give me a nice even lighting with a hot spot towards the rear as it falls off towards the front. Because we want that nice even amount of lighting over the car. And I know that I'm going to light this car from behind anyway for the shadow pass. So that's how I lit the side of the car. Okay, let's move on to the next part. For the front of the car, I did a similar sort of thing. I actually went and stood as close to the far wall as possible, holding the light again about head height and then angling it towards the car. And then as the camera opened, I walked backwards for about six or seven seconds and then turned the light off before I ended the exposure. And that's how I lit the front of the car. I had uh, two cars that I was using to frame up this 1930s Ford Model A and I wanted to make those obvious in frame as well. Now on the left hand side we have this lovely glossy grey car and I wanted to light that car so basically just a single pass of this and it was only about four seconds that the light was on and all I did was basically stand down by the side of the car and then walk backwards holding the light about shoulder height. I turned it off after about four seconds leaving six seconds of capturing nothing and I quite like how that looked. It was just pulling out the right amount of details without over lighting it and drawing attention to it too far. I can always darken it down inside of Photoshop later on. Now I had one more car that I needed to light and that is this 1934 Ford Model A that is uh, in work in progress shall we say and I wanted to light this one as well so basically doing the same sort of thing um, standing down the side of the car and I just waved the light over the top of the car in a slow arc for about two seconds and then shut the light off just kicking enough light on there so you can see what's going on but without making it too bright that it doesn't distract from the frame. Okay so that was it for the two foreground elements let's tackle the rest of it now this is the key light for the frame again shot at 10 seconds and I did actually have the light on for the full 10 seconds this one is a bit tricky to start with I actually wanted to shoot with the light behind the car so I tried shooting from way back behind the car but the problem is that there's so many gaps in the shelves and the ventilation shafts that you could actually see the light and it was super distracting I did toy with the idea of shoving a flare over it and using that instead but in the end I decided I didn't want to do that so I actually went and stood further around towards the camera still behind the car so the rear of the car is going to be the brightest point of the car um, and this worked much better it also made the shadows on the ground look a lot more nicer and subtle to my eye so I, I preferred that a lot and to get that effect all I did was basically hold the light above my head and slowly twist my body from left to right just kicking some light around the scene so that we've got a little bit more definition so the car's not just gonna leap off the page there is more definition going on in the background there and then basically after that I wanted a little bit more 
full light. So I literally held the light above my head and then walked from the camera to the other side of the, the uh, workshop just so I can illuminate a little bit more inside the workshop so we can see what's going on and that way the car is not lost in this black abyss. Okay, so that's basically all there was to the shooting side of things. It's pretty straightforward. I don't like to complicate these things. I like to work as smooth and as quickly as possible. So the editing I did is the same on all of these photos. I literally dropped the highlights by 20, lifted the shadows by 20, and I came down to the bottom, removed all of the sharpening because I'll do that at a later stage. And I also removed chromatic aberration. Now, I was going to correct the lens, however, when I removed the distortion, I felt like it kind of lost something, and I kind of like the distortion that the lens gave on it. It's a 35mm, so it's not particularly strong anyway, but I liked it, so I kept it in there. It's up to you whether you want to do the same. Okay, so we're now done inside a Lightroom, so select all of those images, right click, hit edit in, and open as layers inside Photoshop, and it'll load them into stack. And I'll meet you in Photoshop, and I'll walk you through how I put the image together. Okay, now we're in Photoshop. Now, like a blithering buffoon, I forgot to take a blank exposure, which was kind of a bad idea, but however, I made it work. So this is the background exposure or that key light that I was talking about. And I use this as my starting point. It's always a good idea to use that so you can figure out how you're gonna light the car on top of that and blend what exposures you need around it so it looks like it all kind of cohesively matches. You don't want mismatched lighting or a uh, key light coming from this way and you're lighting the car from this way it all wants to match up so it looks nice so this is what I started with and then I started to move on to the side of the car so um, I knew that this exposure was going to be far too bright over here this area is all too blown out um, and I knew that I had a nice lighting pass so normally I would use lighten as my blend mode but I actually left this as normal so if we turn on the side light you can see here we've reversed that lighting and now we've got the nice clean reflections down the side and I just mask this in with a layer mask I've got a video out on layer masks if you want to check it out up here um, I use the brush for this method I thought it was nice to keep it a bit more simplistic however if you want to use the pen tool and be more refined I've also done a tutorial on that which you can check out as well up here Right, moving on. So this is the mask that I use. Um, it's basically just a soft brush and I basically brushed in the areas of the car that I felt like it needed. So nothing too complicated there. Okay, and then moving on to the front, this layer is set to lighten and it's basically just lighting in the past. So if we remove the layer mask for that, you can see how much spill there is and I really only wanted to contain this to the front. Now seeing as I had a rough mask painted out for the car already, I just recycled that mask and layered it on top of that. So these two together basically do all of the lighting for the car. Now because it's not a glossy car, super easy to work with. We don't need to be that refined or accurate with our reflections and these two passes were basically all it needed to light the car. So let's start building out the rest of the environment that foreground interest and we'll start with the gray car to the left of the frame as well so I have a gray car here so if we turn this on remove the layer mask this is what it's doing it's obviously doing far too much I have the layer set to lighten so it's boosting what is underneath but not um, linear dodging or it's not removing so it helps tie it into the atmosphere and basically that area was in shadow before so all of this lighting is going to be concentrated on that car so I just slapped a layer mask on there um, and I brushed a little bit into the floor as well so that we can retain some of that information because I didn't want it to pop off the dark floor too much so if we have a look at this layer mask right here you can see it's basically circled around the car and a little bit of spill onto the floor not the most refined masking but after my car owner virus lockdown light painting project that I've been working on I've learned to relax and step back a little bit with the masking and just be a bit more fluid with it rather than being a hundred percent accurate on the time sure there is a time to be super accurate with your masking but for the images like this I felt like there was no real need so um, to my eye that was looking a little bit bright so I decided I want to add a curves adjustment on there just to bed it down a little bit so keeping the information there but just knocking it down and simply on this curves I just basically grabbed the mid-tones and dragged them down so you can see that up here in the curves adjustment right I felt like that side was taken care of now it's time to take care of the 34 Ford Model A coupe right in the foreground here so if we turn on this layer and let's remove the mask so we can see what's going on so this layer is set to lighten as well again just brightening up the information that is underneath and if we uh, put the mask back on you can see all I was doing was removing it from over here now because the lighting was so focused on this car there was no real need to mask it anywhere else because it wasn't really doing a huge amount so it's just lighting up this wheel and I removed that reflection as you can see over here so this area had a double reflection which I didn't really like so yeah just using a mask to remove that 
Uh, the rest of the layer is fine. And then I just add a curves adjustment on there again, just to drop down the exposure a little bit so it doesn't demand too much attention and doesn't draw your eye straight to the foreground and then ignoring the car behind you. So yeah, that's what I did for that. And then we have a bit of a front fill. I felt like there's a dark gaping hole behind this car and I didn't really like how that was looking. To me, it kind of looked a bit lazy and like I could give a little bit more information there. It's always better to have too much information and be able to craft the lighting the way you want rather than having areas where there's literally no lighting and then suffering with it in post. So for that, I just had a, another mask, which was the front pass. Um, and all I do is set that to lighten and then just mask it into this little area over here. So if we have a look at that mask, it's literally just a big white soft brush painted over there. And then I, all I did after that was reduce the opacity down to about 20, uh, because if you put it back to 100, it's just a bit too much and it looks like there's a light on over there. So I felt like 20 was just the right amount. And you can see a little bit into the shadows, but it's not too uh, distracting. One thing that was left on this, I looked at the image and I was like, I like this, but this key light source over here could do a little bit more boosting. So all I did was I have another layer set to screen and it was just a soft white brush painted through there. And I dropped the opacity down to 25 and it just gives a little bit of haze into the corner. And that was it for assembling the image inside of Photoshop. So what I'm gonna do is jump back into Lightroom and I'll walk you through how I finished off this image. <laughs> All right, back in Lightroom now, this is the final image. Now, if we have a look at the before from Photoshop and the after, you can see it has transformed quite a bit, but don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through all the steps that I took to do that. So let's start off in the basic panel over here. Felt like it was a little bit dull, so I pushed up the exposure by a third of the stop. Now, if you hover over the exposure tool and if you just use your up and down arrows, it does it in tenths of a stop. But however, my camera works in thirds of a stop. I think in thirds of a stop. I like my Lightroom to work in thirds of a stop as well. So if you hold down shift and then press up, it does it in exactly one third of a stop. So a little handy tip for you guys there. So moving down the line, I moved my highlights to minus 45 and I pushed my shadows to plus 40. I really wanted to see what was going inside the shadows in that lovely workshop because it'd be a shame to shut it all down too much and hide all that information because these kinds of workshops are full of treasure and it's always cool to see them in your images. Okay, moving down, I, like, I pushed my whites up to plus 35. I like punchy highlights, so it's nice to be able to do that and push them up, but not clipping too far. Uh, I also dropped my blacks down to minus 15. I added a bit of texture and a little bit of clarity in here just because it was grungy in there and I liked that vibe so I wanted it to come across in the photograph a little bit more so I just felt like adding a little bit of texture and a little bit of clarity helped that. I also boosted up the vibrance up here but I also dropped down the saturation as well. Um, I'm going to get onto curves in a second because that is where I do the bulk of the work but I'm going to walk you through a couple of extra steps. So there's a couple of things I did in hue, saturation and luminance. Um, I dropped down the oranges and yellows and saturation just a tiny bit. And then if we come over to luminance, I also dropped off uh, the red and orange luminance values because I felt like they were commanding too much of that information. And I didn't really want it to be that prominent. I wanted this to feel like a little bit blue and a little bit grungy and a little bit desaturated. So yeah, I didn't really want the red and oranges in there. So if we turn this off, you can actually see like specifically around the license plate and this yellow duct over here and some of these reds in the background. Um, they're quite commanding and they really do pinch your eye towards it. So if we turn it back on, it just helps bed those in a little bit more, making it a much more pleasing image in my opinion. Right, if we scroll down, um, I've done quite a large amount of sharpening, plus 65 here with a rather large radius, but then again, it's kind of a gritty environment and I feel that it suits it. I also added quite a bit of detail, but then making sure I was controlling all of this by adding in a lot of masking here. I use 75% of the masking, so it's really only affecting the edges and not globally sharpening that image. I added a little bit of noise reduction in there. Not that it needs it, but the sensor had been open and closing quite a lot, so there is a chance of sensor noise being in there from being open for such a long time so I just added it a little bit in there and it's also quite nice it helps smooth out some of the imperfections in the paint although this is a patinaed car so it's not really necessary at all but anyway I digress that's all I did for that all right coming back up to the curves you can see that there's no black point I actually lifted the black point up to around about 19 or 20 so nothing in this image is 100% black now the reason why I did that is because as Lightroom was actually building previews it gave me like this faded look I kind of liked it so I wanted to emulate that so that's why I lifted up the black point now however doing that on its own doesn't really make the image look that good 
good. So I made sure I controlled those shadows by pulling them down. So we get this kind of like filmic kind of look in the shadows, which I liked. But then as I was doing that, I noticed that the highlights were starting to go. So that's why I pushed up the highlights in this area and pushed them up just so that it looks a little bit more punchy as well, because I didn't really want a flat image. Um, I didn't really do anything to the red channel or the green channel. However, in the blue channel, now this is kind of my signature thing. This is what I like to do a lot. I put a bit more blue into the shadows and I dragged a little bit of blue out of the highlights, which introduces a little bit of yellow. This is kind of like a movie technique and I really like the way it looks. But yeah, I do that typically on all of my images. Other than that, I think that's basically everything I did inside of um, the tab on the right. Um, I did actually use some masks in here, so I have a graduated filter mask from the top, and that's just two thirds of an exposure drop, and that's just controlling the ceiling so your eye doesn't wander too high. I just wanted to kind of focus it towards the car a little bit. And I think I used some radial masks in here as well. Yep, I have one in the top corner up here. So I wanted to exaggerate that haze that was going on. So basically left all the exposure as it was, but what I did was drag out some of the clarity and drag out some of the dehazing. So kind of losing contrast in that area as if like the barn was a little bit dusty and a little bit smoky and a key light would start lighting up the particles in the air. That's kind of what I was going for here. So that really worked quite well, I felt. Um, then there's one more on the car itself and this is kind of like doing a vignette but the other way around so basically I just masked over the car heavy feather on it so it doesn't look like a sharp line and I basically just gave the car another third of a stop exposure but then made sure that I was controlling the highlights so I dropped those down to negative 10. <laughs> That's the final image guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun photographing these cars. They're incredible and the workshop was just perfect. I really do love all these old school workshops and these cool people who build amazing cars. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know down below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and follow me on Instagram. And as always guys, I've been Nat Shooting Dave and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.